if I ever forget to hit that, feel free to remind me because I need to make myself a giant post-it note to remind me. I'm bad at remembering, but I will add in um, right next to the Oh, so someone asked a question about updating the syllabus. The There was a couple like little details on um, some grading things that changed. And I updated my office hours. Those those changed a little bit. So that was the only, those were the only changes. So nothing, nothing huge. Okay. And then after whatever the lecture is, so right now we're doing class introduction, I will post a link to the recorded Zoom sessions. Um, when our Zoom session ends, it takes, I don't know, maybe four or five hours or so for Zoom to send me the link. Uh, so I will post it the same day. It just kind of depends on how quickly they get it to me. So I'm gonna go back to our homepage. My little banner up here was made by one of my students from last semester that was her gift that she gave me at the end of the semester so i had to display it i think it's super cute that's my my cat in her lab goggles <laughs> um, okay scrolling down a little bit further we have all of the zoom links so i actually got an email this morning that angelique is not going to be our si leader anymore so i did not get a chance to update this this morning um, but I will have to remove her, unfortunately. And then underneath that are all of my Zoom links. So I do have separate links for lecture and lab because I record the lecture section sessions. Um, for lab, I will record pre-lab sessions that are on experiment days, but I won't record worksheet days because it just doesn't make sense. We're going to use breakout rooms and breakout rooms don't get recorded. So it would just be a lot of dead time. And then I have the Zoom links here for my office hours. Um, so this is, like I said, kind of the chronological side of how it's organized. The other chronological side is you have a to-do list over here. So this is just for our class. I believe it shows everything within the next two weeks that is coming up. And then the other way to see it chronologically is if you click on the course calendar, it will show you all of the due dates. And then on the right-hand side over here, it will show you all of your classes so you can display just one class at a time or all of your classes, however you wanna see it. And then in the calendar feed, you can um, copy and paste this into any other calendar that you already use. So if you want everything all in one space. So just kind of a info there in case you didn't know that, but that's the chronological side. The other way that it's organized is if you go over to the module section. So I don't have a lot of options over here. I hide all of the stuff that you don't need to see that's just not going to be helpful or you know, just kind of in the way. So if you go to the modules, this is where I have it organized by like document type. Um, so I actually don't like the word module, but I can't, I can't change these words over here. Um, if it were up to me, I would just call this files or documents, because that's what it is. It's just a place for me to share files with you. So the first section is class information. So the syllabus is in here. And then a periodic table, just in case you don't have one handy. There's, I've saved one that I liked. Um, some Canvas pages on how to submit assignments, how to take a test in our class. These links down here are for SCC resources. So the help desk, financial aid, veteran center, all of that kind of stuff is all within the link here. Um, we're going to use a lab software called Beyond Labs. It is free. The school has already paid for it. This is the installation code right here. So you are more than welcome to follow the instructions and get it installed on your tablet or laptop or computer and use that code. Um, I will talk about it before we use it. I 
want to say it's week five when we first use it. I don't remember off the top of my head, um, but I will talk about it in class and, and give you a little tutorial on how to use it before we actually need to use it. And then the last thing in this little section I want to mention is OERs, which stands for Open Educational Resources. These are essentially free online textbooks. Um, so you do need a book for this class. I mean, it's kind of hard to get by organic chemistry without a textbook, but I also know they're expensive and we're doing everything digitally. So we might as well have digital options. So this is a list of resources that I have compiled online that I think are good and they would be good alternatives to our textbook. Um, if you are looking for other options for other classes, if you search whatever topic it is, physics, calculus-based physics, OER, that will help you find other online resources as well. And then the rest of these sections are different document types. So lecture slides, I have them in PowerPoint form and PDF form. So they're the exact same, just different file types. The experiments, so we're doing 12. Worksheets. If you click on the tests, you're not going to see anything yet. It just tells you that it's locked, but that's where the tests will be. And then I will add in study guides here as well. And then some extra credit and a couple miscellaneous assignments. So go back to the homepage. That's Canvas in a nutshell for us. Um, if you have trouble finding anything or if you find any broken links, please, please, please let me know. I want to make it as accessible and easy to use as possible. The bottom of this page tells you about me and my expectations and what I hope you get out of this class. Um, I really love teaching. This is my 15th year teaching chemistry. Uh, it's only my second year at SCC. I taught for 13 years at Fresno City College and I moved to Southern California because my fiance lived in Long Beach and we had been long distance for a couple of years and it was time for us to close that gap. So I did, I got a job here and moved down. Um, I really love SCC though. It's a great school. It's a great campus. It's a great group of students. So I'm happy to be, be, at, our, be at my new school now. Uh, let's see. This is Canvas organization. We've talked about all that. Oh, here's the rest on me. So I did say I've moved here a couple years ago. So I moved here just in time for the pandemic. <laughs> Uh, which is actually kind of good because otherwise I'd be stuck in Fresno for a lot longer. Um, love Disneyland. Love Harry Potter. Recently, I started running again. I signed up for a half marathon in October. So that's kind of my life right now. Super family oriented. That's my mom and my sister in that bottom picture. I am an ordained minister. I married my two best friends right here in the middle. Uh, that's my fiance, Sheila. This is actually the day I proposed to her. So, oh, and that's my cat, Penny Lane. So you know all about me. Um, one of my goals with teaching is not just to teach you chemistry, but to prepare you for the road ahead. So whether that second semester organic chemistry or transferring or med school or pharmacy school or your career, I want to help you with that. I have students email me and text me years down the road to either ask for letters of recommendation or just to update me on their life. And I love being a part of that. So I do give you my cell phone number down here. You can text me anytime. So a couple things about that. Don't ever feel like you're bothering me. I've had students like not text me at certain times of the day. I turn my phone on silent at night when I sleep. So you're never going to wake me up. Um, and if I'm somewhere where I can't or don't want to text, I'm just going to ignore it until I can. But I will text you back. Um, you'll definitely get a text back sooner than you will get an email. And I also know sometimes it's just easier to take a picture of something and text it than it is to email it. And it's obviously what we use more than 
email. So it just makes it nice and easy. Um, the other thing about texting is I don't have any of your guys' numbers. So if you are hesitant about asking a question, I know sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating or scary. You don't have to tell me who you are. I only teach for semester organic chemistry. So you don't have to tell me what class you're in because I know what class you're in. But you can remain anonymous if you want. So just something to keep in mind that that number's there anytime you need to use it. All right, let's see. Scrolling back up. I think we've talked about all this. Any questions for me as I'm rambling on here? Okay. Then we're going to talk about the syllabus. I think I need to do this and this. I have it already open as a PDF. It is on Canvas as a PDF as well, but I just wanted to make sure I had it opened and saved right. So I'm actually teaching three sections of 280A this semester. There's only two listed on here because the third one is um, scheduled a little bit different, so it doesn't quite fit the same mold. Um, but there's a lot of you guys this semester. So there's 22 in our class. Oh, kind of a note on that. Um, well, okay, yeah, we'll talk about it now since I'm bringing it up. Um, I'm not gonna take roll through Zoom because I can just get the Zoom, I don't remember what they call it, the Zoom report or whatever it is, that gives me like a list of who is in the class. If you're on the wait list though, at the end, stick around and then we will um, kind of sort that out and see who's here from the wait list. But if you're actually on the roster, I'm just taking roll from the Zoom list, so. We'll figure that out as we go along through the semester. So here's us right here. This is a remote live class, which means that all of our classes will be through Zoom during their scheduled times. So lectures 845 until 1010. And then lab is right after that. But with the other Zoom link, 1015 to 125. We're starting today. We're going till June 6th. It will go much faster than we realize. It always does. Uh, requ required stuff. We talked about some of this. We talked about Beyond Labs. Ah, here we go. The first experiment we need it is during week six. Um, there are some requirements on what your laptop or tablet has to have. Um, they're, they're listed here. They also do have a web-based web -based version now. I have not personally used that one yet. I tried to find if there was any requirements for it since it's web-based. I don't think you have to download anything, but we might have to play around with that if you plan on using that one instead. Lecture textbook, I'm gonna grab mine. Oh, also, I live in the middle of Long Beach. Like, if you're familiar with Long Beach at all, I live right near Cherry and 7th. So it's loud all the time. I think my neighbors are constantly doing construction on their house. <laughs> so I have to wear my headset so that you don't hear all the shenanigans in my neighborhood. Okay, so this... Stop sharing for a second here is the lecture textbook. Um, it is by David Klein. I think it's a good book. You know, it's a lecture textbook. But as far as explaining things, I think that he does a really good job. Um, he is an organic chemistry professor, which believe it or not, is not always the case for people that write textbooks. But he started by writing a small book, which is on the list of um, optional things. It's called Organic Chemistry as a Second Language. He wrote that to like help out his own students. And it sold so well that the publishers asked him to write a full textbook. Um, so it's based off of what he thinks his, what would help his own students. Um, within the chapter, let's see, 
make this big so I can see what I'm showing you. Okay, so within the chapter, there are sections called skill builders. And in the skill builder, he goes through a sample problem and like shows you how to do it. And then it has a practice the skill section. So it gives you a chance to work on it and then apply the skill, which would be like the next step up. And then at the end, it says need more practice. And then it gives you which problems at the end of the textbook are similar. So it's a really good way to make sure that you're grasping the material. When I write my study guides for the test, I make a list of questions that will, that apply to the topics I, I think you need to know. And so that might be study or it might, excuse me, it might be skill builders or it might be end of the chapter problems, but they are, um, I definitely use the textbook questions as study material, not assigned, not for points, but as study material. And then while I'm not sharing, I'm gonna show you the other book. This one is optional. Uh, this is the lab textbook. So it is a micro scale approach to organic laboratory techniques. Um, I made it optional mostly because I could this semester. Um, we, all right, full disclosure, fall semester, we don't know if we're going to be online or in person. We are writing the schedule so that we will be in person. But obviously, we don't know what's going to happen between now and then. Um, remember quarantine was supposed to be two weeks. That's the joke that my fiance and I keep saying is that this is the longest two weeks ever because we were supposed to go into quarantine for two weeks and then have spring break and then I'll be back at school. So two weeks. Um, I bring this up because if we are in person in the fall, you will need this textbook. I know that there's PDF copies floating around online. Um, so if you can find one, share it around. I'm all for that. Um, it's an expensive book though. I think it's like $300 when it's new. It's ridiculous. For this semester though, you don't need it. So, and in the fall, if we are online, you still won't need it. So with all that being said, you might just want to wait to buy it. All right, going back to my syllabus here. Um, also in the required material is a calculator. We do very, very few calculations in this class. That's actually one of the big differences between organic chemistry and general chemistry is general chemistry is very quantitative based, very numbers and math based and organic chemistry is very qualitative conceptual based. So I think you get to use a calculator on one test, um, but you know, make sure you have one a webcam. Um, obviously, I don't require your camera to be on during lecture. That is completely up to you. It's nice to have it on when you do breakout rooms. Again, not required though, but it will be required when we take tests. Um, so something to think about before we hit our first test. I'll point that out in the schedule. I think it's week three, but we'll, I'll show it to you on schedule. And then optional materials are the solutions manual for the textbook, uh, the study books that I mentioned. So organic chemistry is a second language. Um, organic chemistry is a second language comes in two, two, not two versions, two halves, I guess would be the way to say that. There's a first semester and a second semester half. But the way that we divide up our first and second semester doesn't line up with the way that that book is divided. So if you do plan on buying that book, you actually need to buy both, both halves um, because we'll use parts out of each half. The lab manual, so that brown textbook is what this one is. And then a molecular model kit. Let's see, where's mine? I'm gonna grab mine. Okay, I have two because, because I'm a nerd and that's just what I do. Um, 
you probably used well, this label's horrible, but you probably used one like this in general chemistry when you were learning about Lewis structures and um, geometry and angles. So it's the ball and stick kind. You take the little ball and you, you put the sticks in it. So this one works. This one will work just fine. Um, it's technically meant for inorganic because we're carbon based. Organic chemistry really just means carbon, carbon chemistry. Um, carbon can't have more than four bonds. So any of the little balls in there that has more than four holes in it, you would not use this semester. Doesn't mean it's not a good kit. It just means that it has parts in it that won't be useful right now. Uh, this is the other one that I have. It's called Molecular Visions. Um, and I can totally post links for these two. This one looks a lot different, more a lot more different, but I personally like it better. Um, it's probably just because it's what I used in grad school, though. So it has pieces like this, so they're angled, and then you put them together like this. So that little knot in the center would be the carbon. And then it has the four sticks coming from it. So the four bonds. Um, neither one is necessary. It can help. We're going to do one specific chapter where we have to be able to visualize things in 3D. So you have to be able to see that flat picture on the PowerPoint slide or in your book and then take it off the page and see it in 3D. Some people can do this without any problem and other people struggle with it a lot. When I was a student in the class, I couldn't see it. I had a really hard time with it and it took me a long time to be able to see it. I think if you play video games, it helps with, with making that jump from the flat picture to the 3D shape, um, which, which I don't. I stopped playing video games as soon as you had to like turn corners and not go straight. So it's, it's just not, not in my brain to move that way. Um, I will post links for those though. Let me write myself a note or I will, I will forget. Molecule kit links. And I'll tell you what chapter you need them for. I think it's chapter five, but I'll double check that and put that in the announcement as well. All right, back to the syllabus. I swear the rest of the syllabus will go faster. Whoops. Um, let's see, class structure, we've kind of talked about this. Lecture and lab will both be through Zoom. Lab will either be an experiment or a worksheet. On experiment days, um, on experiment days, I will do like a pre-lab lecture, get you started. I will record that and post that. And then you don't have to stay on Zoom to complete the experiment. Beyond Labs takes a lot of memory in your computer. So I have a hard time using Beyond Labs and Zoom at the same time. I kind of have just to close everything down. So it it's not always... Um, realistic to be on both at the same time, but I will stay on Zoom. So if you're doing stuff and you have questions, you can come back and ask me. On worksheet days, we're going to use breakout rooms, do the worksheet together, talk to each other, ask me questions, I'll ask you questions, all that good stuff. Oh, Elizabeth, I see your message there. I'll ask, I'll ask Professor Torneo for the link for that website. Uh, 3D website. There are some other ones out there too. Um, I'll see if I can find some good ones. Sometimes I feel like it takes more effort to learn some of those websites than it is actually helpful, but I will, I'll find some good ones for us. Uh, the last thing on here is how to turn in assignments on Canvas. That's actually what your first assignment is. And again, you've probably done this before. So this will be easy points. 
it's good to make sure you know what you're doing now. How to succeed in this class. Organic chemistry has a reputation. I am well aware of this. I don't tell the general public what I do for a living. I tell them I'm a teacher because I know that I look like a first grade teacher. And so being a first grade teacher is nice and friendly. But if I tell people I'm an organic chemistry professor, they don't have nice things to say to me. So I know the reputation this class has, but many people enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I have my master's in organic chemistry. I think it's fun and interesting and stretches your brain a little bit. So I have some info here on what's going to help you. Some of this is stuff that you know. Stay on schedule. Don't fall behind. Just like in general chemistry, things continue to build on each other. The same is true in this class. So it's really difficult to play catch up because chapter three uses chapter two concepts and so on. Obviously come to Zoom, participate, turn in all your assignments, get those points. Um, I do have the skill builder and those conceptual checkpoint problems to study for the test. I will give you specific problems for each test as we get closer looking for my cat. So I mentioned this, not every was in here, but my cat's food and water is behind me and she likes to sit so that her tail is next to all my wheels of my chair. So I will often look down just to make sure I'm not running over any cat paws or tails. Form virtual study groups. If anyone wants to form a Discord group, I will be more than happy to share the link through an announcement and you can send that to me and I'll post it for everybody. Um, and then talk to me. I am here to help you. I know this is not a normal in-class setting, but that doesn't mean I'm not as available. Um, you can email me or text me at any time. Obviously, I will be here in Zoom for our classes and Zoom office hours. And if those Zoom office hours don't work for you, then let me know and we can schedule a time to talk. Um, I would be more than happy to do that. SCC has a lot of good resources, the tutoring center, the STAR Center. So the STAR Center is specifically for science and there are chemistry tutors that are in there that will be more than happy to help you. Yes, so got a message asking if it's okay to put phone number in study group. That is completely okay. So yeah, if you guys wanna add stuff to the chat for forming study groups, I am all for that. I would love that. Um, and then I have some links to YouTube organic chemistry, organic chemistry YouTube channels. I was trying to make sure the words are in the right order there. Um, YouTube channels that I personally like. Some of these, like Professor Dave explains, has a lot of other topics or um, other levels of chemistry, but does have organic stuff. Um, and the organic chemistry tutor I know is one of my students' favorites from last semester. And then I like Leo for science a lot as well. And then there are, of course, a lot of good websites out there. Khan Academy, I'm sure you've heard of Khan Academy. They do a lot more than just chemistry, but I have their organic chemistry link here. And then ChemWiki is a site made by UC, I want to say Davis, not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure it's UC Davis. Um, but again, a good, a good site. So lots of good resources out there. Everything from me to your classmates to on campus slash digital and then the internet as a whole. Use your resources. And if you're struggling with something in particular, we get to a certain chapter and you just can't figure it out, you can email me or text me and ask me if I have any more resources for that thing, whatever that topic is. And um, I have a whole bunch of bookmarks of like possible worksheets or online assessments that I will be more than happy to share with you. All right, here's my stuff. 
um, email address. The voicemail phone number here, this is my office phone number on campus. So the if you leave a voicemail, it will get emailed to me. So I will hear it, but I won't ever answer that phone number. It doesn't it doesn't ring anywhere except for in my office. And then my cell phone number. Um, and then my office hours are on there. All right, so here's where it's gonna go a little bit faster. So course description, prerequisites, units, student learning outcomes. So these are all the basics for the class. It's first semester organic chemistry. We're gonna talk about carbon. <laughs> it's like the simplest description of organic chemistry, but it's true. Um, oh, attendance and drop policy. So when we take online classes, it works a little bit different. So I mentioned I'm not gonna take role during Zoom. Um, attendance is based on class participation, which isn't just attending Zoom, but it's turning in assignments. So we actually have to have what's called like a first day assignment in order to take role. So I will show you where that's at. Some of you have already turned it in already. Um, it should be a five minute quick, easy assignment, um, but it is literally for me to take role for today because it is based off of you completing work. Um, there is a little bit more on that though. Here we go. So if you don't complete that first day assignment by tomorrow, then I can drop you from the class. Um, if you have troubles with it though, if something happens, just, just email me. I don't want to drop anybody from the class if they want to be in the class. So just to put that out there. And then if you miss 10% of the total number of assignments, which would be four assignments, you can be dropped from the class since it's based off of participation. All right, student conduct. I have a link here to the student conduct policy. For the most part, it means treat everybody with respect. We're adults, we know how to act. We're definitely in an online environment. So it might mean a little bit different from what we're used to or how we would normally act in the classroom, but we know what to do. Same thing with Title IX here. Um, Title IX is in reference to harassment and discrimination, sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, gender-based violence, retaliation, stalking, a uh, handful of other things. If you see it, experience it, or a victim of it, please let me know. I would love to get you any assistance you may need. Um, and this does apply to an online environment as well. And the Title IX officer's name and email are on here as well. So if you'd rather contact her directly. All right. This is online. I feel like I've said this is an online class a hundred times, but it applies to so many things. Um, we have to have regular and effective contact. That's what makes this like an official class. Um, and so on here is essentially what I promise to you. I will, if you text or email me, I will get back to you within 48 hours. If you text or email me on a weekday, it's going to be much less than that. It will be a couple hours. If it's on the weekend, it might take me a little bit longer, just depending on what I'm doing. Um, for grading, I put in here, I will get you a grade back within two weeks. Last semester, I put one week. I didn't quite meet that goal every time, so I bumped it up a little bit. And then I will update that schedule page each Friday telling you what we're doing the next week and when things are due. And if I plan on dropping somebody for lack of participation, I will reach out before I do that. Um, because communication is two way street, I expect you guys to reach out to me if you have questions or need help or even just wanna chat. Um, I expect you to participate in Zoom sessions and communicate with your classmates. I see that the group text is forming over there, which I think is great. So that is definitely one way to do it. Um, and then we'll also do it through some breakout sessions. All right. Oh. Um, academic honesty policy. This is the same as if we were in person. There's a link there to the catalog page. 
Um, but you're not allowed to use your notes or books or the internet or anything else when you're taking your tests. Um, as far as lab and worksheets, I do want you to work together. You should be turning in your own stuff, but that doesn't mean you can't work together. DSPS, if you're a DSPS student, let me know as soon as you can, and I will get you all your accommodations. Um, DSPS helps, um, there we go, right there at the top, um, helps out students. The It stands for Disabled Student, no, Disabled Services, oh gosh, what does it stand for? <laughs> disabled Student Program and Services, there we go, had to get the words in the right order. Uh, and that can mean a whole lot of different things. So it's really a, a way to provide students with equal opportunities and access to classes. So whether that means a permanent disability, temporary learning disability, anything in between, they provide with a lot of resources. And then within that same umbrella, the student support services, I have a whole list here on campus resources that I've moved online, everything from DSPS to technology, um, and then some that are more financially based, some that are more academic based. But there are a lot of resources on campus that are there just to help you out. Um, if there's something that you need help with, whatever it may be, there's probably a resource on campus and I would be more than happy to help direct you to it and find the right people for you to talk to. All right, here's the part you really care about, your grades. My class is worth a thousand points. This makes it easy for everybody. So that means to get an A, you need to get 90%, which is an 895 points because 895 points would be an 89.5%, and I round to the whole number. So your points here are how many points you would need to get each of those grades. Here's how you're going to get those points. We're going to take five tests. They're worth 100 points each. The lowest score is dropped. So there's 400 of your points. The final exam is cumulative, so it will cover chapters 1 through 14. It's worth 150 points. We're going to do 14 worksheets. So we're covering 14 chapters, a worksheet per chapter, 10 points each. We're going to do 12 lab reports, 25 points each. I have a category that's just labeled, labeled as miscellaneous, and we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, exams. Oh, jeez. There we go. Um, we're going to take them during Zoom. If you've taken any other science classes that if you took um, 200B last semester, you probably took tests the same way that we're going to do it. Camera's on, kind of like a side view so that I can see you and your testing area. One of the miscellaneous assignments is just to get ready to take a test. Um, and there is more information. So if you know who Professor Wada is, I have videos of him setting up an area to take a test. So that's what's up on Canvas. 14 worksheets. The worksheets are due the next week on Sunday. So I'll point that out on the calendar. It kind of seems weird to do it on a Sunday, but I'll, I'll explain it to you in a minute. Um, and then experiments. We are using Beyond Labs, but for the first five experiments or so, we're using a mixture of YouTube videos and online simulations. The first handful of experiments aren't really experiments. They're more about learning lab techniques. And so um, I have compiled some online resources to demonstrate these techniques. And then for what the lab report actually entails, there's a list here, everything's on Canvas. We will talk more about that on Wednesday, just because I don't want to overflow your brain with things you won't remember today. Um, and those are also due on the next Sunday. All right, miscellaneous. These are kind of the weird ones. Um, this is where that first day assignment is at. And then test preparedness, just to show me that your area is ready to go. Um, beyond lab setup, just to show me that you have beyond labs 
setup. This all together is worth 10 points. Um, and so I think right now, four, five, six, I think these are worth eight points. So I have space in there to add like one more little baby assignment, which off the top of my head is probably going to be like a little survey at the end of the semester, but we'll see. There's extra credit. So I mentioned the Star Center. The Star Center is a, or what we will use it for, is a chemistry tutorial center. Um, they have DLAs. DLAs stand for Directed Learning Activities. They are extra credit, so completely optional. They're worth five points each, so you can get a maximum of 50 points extra credit. So that's half of a letter grade. They are due on the day of the test that they go with. So when we take test number one, these are the three DLAs that you would turn in. Um, I'll go back over to Canvas and show you where to go to get those DLAs and how to, how to access them. All right, schedule stuff. Um, so these are dates for dropping, refunds, with a W, without a W, all that stuff. And then some holidays that are in there. So our first one is actually this weekend. We have a four day weekend, um, Cesar Chavez day, spring break, and then Memorial day. So we actually miss a lot of holidays because Cesar Chavez day falls on a Wednesday this year. But here's our schedule. So it's color coded. I color code as much as I can. Blue is lecture, pink is lab, green are our no school days, and then purple is what's due. So we're right here doing our class introduction. During lab, we will go over the worksheet for chapter number one. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to lecture on chapter number two. And during lab, we'll talk about experiment number one, which also means we'll talk about how to write a lab report. Worksheet number one and experiment number one are due next week on Sunday. So you have about a week and a half to do all of the assignments. So they are listed right here. Now, one of the things that I removed from the syllabus, so I had posted an announcement and somebody asked in the chat about what I changed in the syllabus. I had in the syllabus that um, I don't accept late work, which is, wasn't ever really true anyways. I just always had it in my syllabus. Um, these are the due dates. However, on Canvas, the assignments will still be available after the due date, which means you can still turn it in. I understand, especially with everything we're going through, that it's incredibly stressful right now. And you're probably dealing with a lot more than what you would in a regular semester. I want you to learn the stuff and I want you to get the points you deserve even if that means that you're turning it in after that date. So if you don't get it in until a couple of days later, that's completely fine. You're not gonna lose any points for turning it in after those due dates. If you turn it in later, it might mean that it gets graded a little bit later because I will have kind of moved on, but those assignments will still be up on Canvas and accessible to you to be able to turn information in or get that information if you need it. Let's see, next Monday there's no school because we've already done one week and we need a little bit of a break. Week three is our first test though. Um, so right here, chapters one through three. So I will get a study guide up for that. I write my study guides after I write the test so that I can kind of cut out anything that, that isn't, well, okay, let me rephrase that. The study guide is to essentially help you narrow down what to study. So I write it after I write the test so that I can cut out the stuff that didn't make it onto the exam. Professor? Yeah. How early do you um, upload the study guides before the exam? 
That is a great question. <laughs> um, I, my goal is a week before. Um, I'm really prepared for this semester. Like all of the worksheets, experiments, and PowerPoints are up online already. This is the most prepared I've ever been. So really all I have to do is write our tests. I say that, I shouldn't tell you guys this because that's gonna make me feel like I need to do it immediately. But really the only thing I have to do is write the tests. So my goal is a week ahead of time. Um, it might be a little bit earlier than that, possibly a little bit later, but that's always my goal. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that notice when we have a test, there's nothing scheduled for lab. So here's test number two. There's nothing in the lab on that same day. There's nothing to do. You're not going to come to lab on those days. Um, it's for a couple reasons. One, if we have any DSPS students, I need that extended time so that they can have their full accommodations if they get time and a half or double time for their tests. And then also, you just took a test. Your brain's going to be a little bit mushy. You're not going to want to sit around and do a digital experiment after you just took a test on Zoom. So we don't need to do anything else on those days. Um, spring break's right in the middle, of course. And then at the end, we have no school on Monday of that week for uh, Memorial Day, and then our final exam at the end there. Um, any? Oh, one more thing I want to point out while we're looking at this is we are covering chapters 1 through 14, but chapter 14 isn't going to come at the end. Chapter 14 is right here. It's it's more of a lab-based topic. We're going to talk about one of the instruments that gets used in lab and how to interpret the data from it. So it's incorporated into lab and it gets put in with chapter four. I'm sorry, test number four. So right here, so test number four is chapters nine, 10, and 14. And then the last test is 11, 12, and 13. So that's the only chapter that's out of order, but I just wanted to point that out. Any schedule questions or syllabus or really anything? Are we allowed to attend other lectures if you cannot make, or for whatever reason, you know, like the 845 or the Monday lab or what, whatever? So that is a good question. Um, I honestly don't know the answer to that. I, <laughs> I don't think that I actually am allowed to share the links because of like privacy law stuff, like FERPA laws. Okay. Yeah. Um, if it's like a one-time thing, I'll send you a link to it, but it can't be like an all semester thing. Oh, okay. Perfect. That makes Thank sense. Thank you. No yeah, problem. of course. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me look at my list. I know I want to go back and let's see. Do to do, do. Talked about all that. We did that. Worksheets. Okay. I'm going to go back over to Canvas. Nope. Not that. That. Um, I'm looking at my notes and I wanted to show you, and you might've already seen this if you've already clicked on it, but if any of the worksheets that you click on, there's a link to the worksheet and there's a link to the answer key. Your worksheets are not going to be graded based on whether or not you got stuff correct. Um, you're getting graded on whether you turn them in doing the worksheets is going to help prepare you for the test. So if you just copy down the answer key to get your 10 points, eh, it's going to show on the test. So it's not really something I'm concerned about. Um, organic chemistry is definitely taking that next step up from general chemistry. So it's, it's taking a little bit more initiative in your own studying than maybe in general chemistry, you might not get well, yeah, so it's just, I'm hoping that you're going to take that initiative to, to do the worksheets and not just copy them down. 
Um, let's see. We need to talk about how to get to the DLAs. So how to do the extra credit. So I'm in the module section. I'm in the first one labeled class information. And right here, there are two PDFs. This one is the Star Center's schedule. Let's see, we'll download. There we go. Um, so chemistry is in purple. So 1230 to six or 130 to six. Notice that there's no Friday time. Um, so keep that in mind as you're doing information, as you're doing DLAs. The other thing with the Star Center is that because the DLAs are due on test days and I have three sections and then there's another instructor that has a section. So there's about 80 students that are doing the same DLAs at the same time. The line for the DLAs can get kind of long. So let me open up that other, my Zoom controls are in my way, there we go. Um, this PDF shows you how to get to the Star Center. So if you've never gone to it, or maybe have only done it in person, this shows you how to, how to attend the Star Center digitally. Um, and it gives you the direct link and gives you some information. But when you get into it, you're, they're using Cranium Cafe. You're going to ask for the DLA by name. So on the syllabus, it tells you which DLAs are due. Let's see. I just need to fix how I'm sharing my screen. Then I can go back and forth. Okay, there we go. Oh, well, not let me do that now. There we go. So over here, it tells you which DLAs are due with which tests. So you could go into the Star Center today and ask them for these three DLAs. Tell them that you're in first semester organic chemistry. You want the functional group DLA, the PK and molecular structure, and the solving acid base problem one. They will give you those PDFs. And then after you complete them, you go back into the Star Center and ask them to check your DLA. And they will go through it, make sure everything's correct or tell you what you need to fix. And then once it is all fixed, they sign off on it. Um, and then you're going to upload the signed copy. You technically only need to upload that signed front page, but I know it's PDF. So sometimes it's just easier to upload the whole thing, which is completely okay. Now I'm telling you all of this because on those exam days, the line to get your DLAs checked might take an hour or two. So I am highly advising you to get them done early or when you go to the Star Center to get them checked, know that it might take a while. So you can just have your laptop open while you're waiting in their digital line while you're doing something else. So something to keep in mind. All right, there was something else I was gonna tell you guys. What was it? Um, let me look at my list here. We did DLAs, talked about all that. Oh, I remember what it is. Okay. So I wanted to bring up the first day assignment. Oh, and then on, on here for the DLAs, I have them listed by name and then what test they correspond to. So um, in organizing our class, I try to make everything as black and white as possible. I don't want anything to be uncertain or in that gray area or ambiguous. I think it's really important for you guys to know exactly what's expected of you. 
and what you can expect from me. So if anything is ever unclear or you think that there's a typo or, you know, I might say you need to do this, but I don't tell you what this is, call me out on it. Let me know that something needs to be fixed. I will be more than happy to do it. Okay, that first day assignment that I mentioned. So the main purpose of this assignment is to take attendance for today so that you have class participation for today. Um, it should be easy. You're going to do two things. On a piece of paper, handwritten, so not on your tablet, you're going to write down your name, your major, and your career goal. Then digitally, so using Word or Pages or Google Docs, something, tell me what you've been watching lately that you would recommend. So Netflix, Amazon, whatever. Maybe you're going back to an old DVD. And copy and paste a picture. So just search a Google image for a picture for that. And then you're going to combine your handwritten document and this typed document into one PDF. So this is for a couple reasons. You will have to turn in handwritten stuff and you're obviously gonna have to turn in some typed stuff. You're gonna have to copy and paste some pictures in and you're gonna have to merge all of that into one PDF. So essentially it's kind of forcing you to do all of the assignment styles into in this first assignment with some low stakes points and some low stakes <laughs> writing criteria. Um, I do have a link here to how to submit assignments. So we've probably done all these before because we've been digital for a little bit now, but in case there's something you haven't figured out or maybe you wanna find a better way to do it, I have some links to videos on here on how to turn a word Google Doc or Pages file into a PDF, how to turn a handwritten assignment into a PDF. So these are different scanner apps. If you have a newer phone, a lot of the cameras will scan the document already. Like it just knows that it's a document. Um, and then how to merge two PDFs into one. Um, so some videos that I thought were good and useful. The last thing that is in that assignment, number five here, it says in the comment section, tell me which app you used. So again, this is kind of forcing you to use one extra part of that assignment. So using that comment section, but it also lets me know um, other resources that are out there. Um, I have an Android. So meaning if you have an iPhone or you're using Mac products, you might be using apps that I'm not aware of. So it helps me kind of build my resources up as well. Um, all right, I think, I think I've done my list. Let me look at my list here. I'm all tangled up. I think so. Let's see. We'll talk about the experiment, like what you're turning in on Wednesday. Put that on my new list. We talked about worksheets and tests and DLAs. What time? Go early. We did all that. Questions for me? Guys are so quiet. Okay, so here's the plan. Professor? Yes. In regards to the Star Center, is it similar? Because I used to go in person, but not online. Is it similar to the math thing where you have to actually like register for it on WebAdvisor? You don't have to register on WebAdvisor, um, but there is a link. Let's see. Let me find it. Because I don't remember what it's called. So how to access it, when you go to the link that's on that document, there's 
there's an enroll now link. And so you're enrolling on Canvas, not on WebAdvisor. So as long as you follow the instructions that are in this PDF and follow that enroll now link that will get you into the star center, but you're not doing it through web advisor. Any other questions. I know you guys were chatting about the um, about the group chat. So I don't know if I missed anything. I just see everybody's numbers there. I don't think I missed anything though. Okay. Our lab starts at 1015. We're going to do worksheet number one. If you are on the wait list, hang out with me. I'm going to pull up our wait list and, and check it out. Um, but if you are on just the regular roster, I will see it in lab. So go click on the other Zoom link in, in a little bit. Um, or feel free to stick around and ask me any questions that you might have. But that is it. That is, that is day one lecture. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Professor. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's see, and I'm pulling, oh, I only have two people on my wait list. Let's see if they're here. Show the wait list. Jada, you are one of them, aren't you? And, oh, and Sophia is here. Okay, good. So Jada and Sophia, I definitely have space for both of you. Um, so, Let's see, we're using, have you used the self-service system before? Do you know what that is? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> I see your, your chat, Sophia, too. So it's, it's the way that they're doing ads now, but let's see, let me pull it up on my screen. I'm not going to share my screen because I think it will share too much, too much info with you guys. Um, but I go in and I like authorize the fact that you can add and you should get an email saying that you've been authorized to add the class. Let me get back to my menu here. Let's see, add authorizations. 280A. Okay, so we're gonna copy and paste. Add authorization. Okay, so Jada, I just put you in. So you should be able to, let's see, dear student. No, um, you should be able to go into web advisor and enroll in the class. I don't know if you want to try that now and then we can figure it out if it doesn't work. And then Sophia, I just added you as well. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't add you to the class. I authorized you the ability to add the class. Are you seeing where to go? 
I just found a, I'm going to put this in the chat. Um, that is a PDF on how to add yourself now. Hmm, I see your chat, Sophia. Let me see. Make sure I didn't do something wrong. Um, I wonder if it just takes a little bit of time. Maybe we're doing it too fast. Yeah, um, so on mine, it does say that I've given you permission, but I wonder if it just takes a little bit of time for it to show up on your screen. Jada, were you able to see yours at all? No, I'm kind of lost. I'm on student planner. This is my first time um, taking a class. I'm just trying to figure it out. If I'm even no able. problem. Yeah, it can be a little confusing and this and the it's new for you but it's also new for me because the way we're doing it has changed so <laughs> um yeah and so sophia said that on hers it still said i needed to give her permission but on my screen it says that i have given both of you permission so it might just be that it takes a little bit of time to to make that switch from my account to your account. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Sophia, did you hit refresh and try again just out of curiosity? Okay. So um, why don't you guys try again like this afternoon? Just it should go through then or even like in an hour or so. Um, and if it doesn't text me or email me and we'll figure it out, but yeah, on my, on my, again, my screen, it says that I've given you permission. So it should, it should just take a little bit of time for it to make that switch. All right. So I do see a few others of you hanging out in here. Anybody else have questions for me about anything? All right, kids, then I'm going to log off unless anyone else has questions. And we will reconvene in about 15 minutes. Oh, I do have a quick question. Yes. Yeah. Registered in the hybrid course, so I don't have the link to the, um, is it the same link for this for the lab or is it a different link? You're signed up for the hybrid one? Yeah, so I wanted to drop the hybrid and then register for this class, so I don't have access to like the link for lab on my um, Canvas. Okay, let me let me grab that. Thank you. Um, Okay, I just put it in the chat. Did you get it, Jada? Yes, thank you. I'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks, bye. Bye. Any other questions? All right, then I will see you guys in about 15.